Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today you've happened to cross a video. If you're new here anyway, it's probably Wednesday because it is today is my Wisdom on Wednesday video series. And we're going to be talking about soul lessons. Now, for the rest of you guys and my regular viewers and subscribers, thank you so much for tuning in every Wednesday. I see you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, let's get started. We are talking about our soul's lessons today. I like to remind you all that this is a learning planet. There are many other existences. There are other, you know, entities, beings on these other planets. There's even entities and beings on this planet. However, today we're talking to humans about humans, and this is a channeled message. I do channel these messages. I have no notes, no no nothing. And this is a learning planet, which means that we have lessons. Our soul comes here to learn because this is really an expert planet. Like when I look at the earth from, say, an astral projection viewpoint, right? Like if I take myself up into the astral and I look down on earth, there's actually a long line of souls, new souls who've never been here ready to come in. Now, I know you and I are like, well, they can take my place. <laughs> I'm not coming back to this broke down one star existence. <laughs> I'm going to upgrade myself at least to three stars. This place is whacked, right? I know. I, I get it. I hear you guys. I feel the same way. And I will say to you, I really believe you have free will. When you cross over, you do your life review, you have free will. You know, you can say, oh, oh, yeah, that was that that right. That person was a mistake. That job, the worst ever. That boss, what an asshole. You know, you can do the review and you can say, I'm not going back. The problem is we look at our review and we go, I, I could do that better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know. I, I learned. I learned that lesson. Can I get credit? Can I get extra credit for that lesson? Like extra, extra, because that was a hard lesson and I learned it. Right. You have skin in the game. You 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 want to come back and do it again because you just know you can do it better. Also, maybe you have kids. If you have kids, a lot of times you want to come back because you want to kind of interact with them. Now, let's talk about uh, this is going to be quick, but I'm just going to do an overview. So, here's the deal you guys. Now, do I have all the answers? No. Am I the guru? No, I am human being on this planet. <laughs> I came in. This is not a planet that I've been to for long. I've been here for a handful of lifetimes. And, and in many ways, that's why I can channel so easily because I haven't been here 200 times like a lot of you have and, and, had, and had that sort of existence, that's those sort of abilities sort of buried right? Like every time you reincarnate here, you want to integrate, you know, you want to integrate. And so, you know, being a psychic, a medium or whatever it is, doesn't, it's not very easy to integrate, right? So here's the deal as far as I understand it. Now, there are some excellent books I really enjoy. So Journey of Souls by Ma Michael Newton. Journey of Souls by Michael Newton. This guy just regressed people as a hypnotist. He regressed people. And one time he regressed somebody a little too far and they didn't go to their childhood. They went to the time between their lifetimes. And that was interesting to him. So he started doing that. And in his books, all he does is give you the raw interview. He asked the question, the patient answers it. He asked the question, the patient answers it. So this is a way you can really learn a lot about how we design our lives, how why we choose these lessons. Also, I would direct you to near death experiences. You those two things really should be the human life instruction manual. <laughs> I did a video called the lost Ex instruction manual for human, you know, lives in my wisdom on Wednesdays playlist which you can find by clicking the swirly logo, you'll go to my main YouTube page, you go to playlist, go to wow, which is wisdom on Wednesdays. 
you guys, over 80 videos, free videos to learn and entertain yourself with. So we have soul groups like soul family up there. Your soul family can be your dad, your mom, your kid, but it can also be your best friend. It could also be a boyfriend or a girlfriend that was particularly important in your life. It could be a friend that was particularly important in your life. These people, this group of people have all agreed to teach each other lessons, okay? And to work with each other. And you as well, you have agreed to teach them a lesson. You know, maybe you're the one that's given that kid the tough love. Maybe you're the one that the kid is taking advantage of because you can't seem to stand up to them. You know, it works both ways, right? They're learning a lesson. You're learning a lesson. Everybody's learning a lesson. So you design your life. You, you literally design it. You say, I'm going to try. And I want to ask that question because I was just looking at birth times when I was channeling that. And, and I was going to say, well, you pick the time, you pick the astrology, right? That's very specific down to the minute. One minute later, one minute earlier could change your personality. It could change certain things, the way, you know, your personality interacts with other parts of your life and your gifts and your just everything, your energy. So what I want to ask them is, can you... I mean, are y'all that precise that that baby is going to come out and that nurse is going to be like, time of birth is, you going to tell me there's no mistakes? They're like, there's a, a taller, a, a limit. There's a limit, but it's all, wow, that's so crazy. Okay. It's all, it's not, it, it's planned. Okay. It's planned. But nothing is 100% planned. This is free will adventure park. Earth is like a free will, really bad. Again, one star. I'm just kidding. It's brilliant and it's it's brilliant in what it's supposed to be doing. <laughs> but as a human, it can seem hard. It can seem like, wow, this is a lot, right? Like, why is all this happening to me? We're going to talk about that. So. It's it it doesn't matter if you if the nurse, you know, sneezes and puts it to a minute later or drops something and needs to, you know, whatever, some gets interrupted and they're like three minutes later and you go from one sign to the next sign. It's not it's not going to affect it that much because they've built in that. That's oh, my God. See, this is why I have to argue with them, because they're like, that's the fun, Susan. I'm like, that that doesn't sound like fun to me. Like I was going to have this chill astrology. And then because. Something happened. Now I'm I'm a freaking mess, right? <laughs> or, you know, the mom didn't push the last time and I stayed in an extra five minutes. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't think, I don't like this. I don't agree with this situation. Like I want more, if I, I'm a Virgo. So if I plan this stuff, it needs to happen according to plan, but apparently it doesn't. So they're like, this is part of the beauty of it is that the human might go this way. The human might go this way. The human might go this way. Right? And they often tell me it's really based on stimulus. So based on your plan, like, okay, I, I know that I'm being born in this family. I could tell you that much. Or I know that I'm going to be adopted. Or I know that whatever it is that's going to happen, I know that. I, I've nailed down those parts of the plan. Okay. But they have to allow for some free will, for some, you know, for just some interesting things to happen. That to them, that's what makes it interesting and fun. Just saying, that's what they just told me. So you pick your family, you pick your country, you pick your race, you pick your sex, you pick your body type. All those things matter. So, like, if you have a, you know, because all of us, most of us are like, well, I wish I was taller. You know, I wish I was shorter. I wish I, my body, you know what I mean? We, all those things are going to be things that we're going to need to work with. 
and decide if that's a lesson, right? So you could have been born a little bit short and you're like, gosh, I wish I could have been taller. Now that could end up being a lesson or you could work through it and be like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm a pint sized ball of fun, right? I don't care, right? Like you don't care. So what? I'm five foot tall. So what? That I'm not as a woman, right? I'm not five, seven or, or whatever. I wanted to be a model, but I'm five foot tall. Oh, well, these are all uh, variables is what they want to call them that the human gets to work with. So you can, one of your lessons is to love who you are. Now let's talk about lessons because I'm going to tell you nine times out of 10, maybe 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you don't want whatever that lesson. So let's say that you were born a uh, super tall as a woman and you're like, I didn't, I didn't ask for that. Why would I ask for that, Susan? You know, don't talk to me, call up your higher self who designed this mess and talk to it, <laughs> learn your lessons. If you just stay in resistance to it, like I would have never chosen that, that's BS, I don't, whatever. Okay, no problem. But if you go through your whole life saying, my life is ruined because I'm tall, then you're not dealing with your situation. You're not dealing with your lesson, okay? Now, it can be your physical attribute, but it could also be that you um, always wanted to be respected. And nobody respects you. You know, nobody, nobody listens to you. Nobody respects you. And so that will be a lesson. So you can think right now, you can just take a moment right now, very quickly, and say, one thing that irritates me is what is it? It, it could be a physical thing of your physical body, it could be an interaction that you're having with someone. Nobody trust you, nobody values you, nobody respects you, people take advantage of you. Um, what is it? What irritates you? What just irritates you? Or what pattern have you seen? Like, I keep dating or marrying this type of person. I can't seem to find my person or the person who really treats me well or loves me. That's a lesson. Repeating patterns are lessons because you didn't learn the lesson, it's gonna keep repeating. Now, I would also describe it like this, and I would also tell you, my experience with my own self and in my experience with many thousands of you, we typically don't learn the lesson like that. Like we don't go, oh, that's, that's it, that's all I gotta do. Uh, it's not usually that easy. What The way I see it is like if you took a cookie and you ate the edges of it, right? You're nibbling at the edges all the way around the cookie. You're not biting into it to get to the center. You're not putting the whole thing in your mouth. You're just nibbling around the edges. Nibbling around the edges looks like, well, it looks like four relationships that were different, but the energy was the same. So maybe they were very different people, but the outcome was they didn't work out for different reasons, but they didn't work out. That would be every one of those relationships would be you nibbling around. Okay. A job, jobs, lots of jobs or lots of bosses. I can't seem to get a good boss. Nobody listens to me. I know what I'm doing. I could really help everybody, but no one listens to me. Whatever it is, that's eating around the edge. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no judgment. Believe me, they're thrilled. <laughs> they are thrilled that you're nibbling around the edges um, because you're really going to learn the lesson. You're really going to really learn it instead of like, if you just ate it, you'd be like, yeah, I got it. You did it really, did you? Because you only experienced it one time. How many times do we have to drive a car before we can actually drive a car? 
right? We have to do things over and over again before we really get the hang of it more often than not. So in this way, these things that are irritating are you nibbling around the outside of this cookie. The inside of the cookie is typically, or the, or the nexus of the problem or the, the core of the problem is usually pretty deep in your energy, in, in one of your chakras, generally speaking. But it could also be from childhood or from this thing that you just can't quite face. When you can eat the whole cookie is when you can face the problem. Okay? You can't face the whole problem, but you can start to sort of address it. Okay? So why do we come here to learn lessons? We come here to learn lessons because our soul is expanding. So when I see people cross over, their soul, if you think about the soul being a real physical organ, it's not. But let's think about that it is. Let's say that when you come into this lifetime, your soul is this big. When you exit this life, lifetime, your soul is this big. That's why a lot of near-death experiencers say it's painful to come back in their body. When they entered their body as an infant, their soul was smaller. It hadn't had all these experiences. But later, after you've lived some life, your soul is bigger. But you're going back in the same container that was made for a smaller soul. So it, it feels, it's hard. They often describe that. Coming back into my body was painful. Coming back into my body was hard on me. I didn't feel like I fit. That's why. So as our souls encounter these lessons and we learn them, you know, and we're going to encounter them 360 degrees. Think about that cookie. So it could be from your parent, your boss, your mate, your kid, your dog, your community, um, your best friend, you know, it, it, the same lesson will show up in all these different people will play supporting roles to help you learn the lesson. So instead of avoiding the lesson, the best thing to do is to say, why, why is this happening? Start asking questions. That's really how I got where I am today. I started asking questions. When you start asking questions, you start getting answers. If you pay attention to the answers, and you take a little ownership of the problem and you make a little steps to address the problem, then you get more answers, you get more assistance, and then the whole thing gets actually easier. It's never easy. It's, uh, it, it really is, can be daunting to learn this lesson because you've locked it away for a reason, right? Um, perhaps you feel that you, Let's say when you were growing up, if you were lauded, they want to use the word lauded, if you got an award at school and you ran home and you got your award out and you're like, look, I got an award. And your parents said, yeah, yeah, whatever. You're not special. You're in the third grade. You should be getting awards. You should be getting awards. That's nothing new. Uh, what just happened is that your sense of doing a good job, your sense of standing out as special. Um, you just got whack a mold. Your parent just said, nope, you're not special. Don't come in this house acting like you're special because you're not. Now, fast forward to when you're an adult and you don't want to stand out. You don't want that accolade. You don't want that, you know, award because you associate it with getting whack a mold. So the lesson is from your childhood, don't stand out, don't make a big deal. Don't, don't look at me, don't even look at me because I need to be, you know, like behind the scenes. I wanna do a good job, but I wanna do it without being seen, without being addressed, without being noticed. So your lesson then is okay. Now we've got a lesson to step into your power and say, 
I'm okay with being noticed. I'm okay with standing on the stage and, and getting an award with all my other peers or by myself, right? But you might not understand why am I so reticent to be acknowledged? You, you don't remember probably that your parent did that because when your parent did that or teacher, I mean, it, it could be anybody, but whoever did that to you, you buried it. You were, you were shamed and ashamed. So you buried it and you said, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to do that again. So if you got an award in school, you threw it away, you know, and then you try not to get awards. Then you try to be, you know, in the middle of the pack. I don't want to stand out. That can change your whole trajectory of your life. I don't want to stand out. Now I'm not going to go to college or now I'm not going to get the best grades in college or I'm not even going to go for the best job. You're always going for something lower than you're really capable of. Now that there's a lot of reasons for that. It could also be that you don't want to be held accountable. You know, maybe in your childhood you were uh, held accountable to some insanely high level and it wasn't ever attainable, but they they made you attain them. They, they're like, no, you you have to be the adult in this household. So now you don't want to be the adult in adulthood. You don't want to be responsible. I'm not responsible. I'm not going to be responsible. Another way this energy can play out is you're uber responsible. You are responsible for everybody. You took that. You got good feedback from your parents. The only thing they cared about was you were responsible, you helped. So that's where that's where your self-esteem lies. Maybe not in um, your grades or maybe not in other things, but being the helper. So now in your life, you're the Uber helper, except for that everybody you help ends up falling apart and you have to help them over again. You never help someone to completion. You're like, well, why do I have to keep helping people? Why is it all falling on my shoulders? Well, because you're offering to help, because your energy suggests you're a helper. So the lesson comes to you. You know, it's it's like magnetic, they're saying. It's really, it's it's I don't know that I'm doing a good job of describing this, but you will attract the lesson to you like magnets. Like for instance, narcissists can pick out their supply. They can pick out the person who will do their bidding, who will put up with their stuff. Out of a hundred people, they can walk up and pick out the, the people. It's magnetic. They know. Energy, boom. You know, there was an interview once where they interviewed criminals in prison. And the criminals were shown videos of just random people walking down the street. And the criminals said, that's the one out of the 10 people you showed me, that's the victim. And the researchers is like, why? They're like, because their energy, I mean, look at the way they're walking. I mean, like to them, it all made sense. The researchers didn't see it. But that was a connection. That was a magnetic connection. Another one would be, um, if you're if you ever know anybody in Al-Anon or AA or something like that, they always say uh, the alcoholic or the the Al-Anon, which is like a person who has been in a supportive role with an alcoholic, the Al-Anon person will find the alcoholic out of 500 people. They'll find each other or the Al-Anon, the adult child of an alcoholic will find the other Al-Anon. OK, it's just magnet. It's like magnet. It's energy. Now, how do you stop that? You're like, well, Susan, I don't want to be a victim and I don't and I am an Al-Anon. I don't want to find other Al-Anons. How do I do this? How do I get out of this? So the first thing is recognizing it is recognizing that you've got this energy. And again, it's buried. So you've got to start asking questions. Why am I in this relationship? Why? Have my last three bosses been this way? Why have my relationships been this way? And 
sometimes it's their lesson, right? Like sometimes it's why are you putting up with them and their lesson? So, you know, we say, oh, I'm a good person. I don't understand why these bad things keep happening to me. I mean, I'm a really good person. I used to say this. I'm a really good person. <laughs> why do these bad people keep showing up in my life? Right? Well, because among other things, when a per, you know, my Angela, I think said this, or when a person shows you who they are, believe them. You know, the difference between me and someone who is more well adjusted is they were like, that person's a jerk. I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm not going to date that person. I'm not going to hire that person. I'm not going to go to work for that person. They see it. We don't see it because we've got this lesson buried where we are not aware. I, I often say the, the energy is on the inside of you and you're not aware of it, but it's broadcasting all around you. Everybody else is aware of it, but you. So knowing yourself is the most important thing. Asking questions. I see a pattern here. I wonder what the pattern means. I wonder why I choose these people. Okay. Gently, not judging. If you judge yourself, you, Susan, you're a big dummy. If you start talking bad about yourself, you're actually making yourself more in a, in a higher position to get back into a bad situation. Okay, so really the way out of it is self-love and self-respect. You start raising your vibration and then you don't need the lesson because you know what? When somebody does treat you bad, you're like, no, I, I, I already been there, got the T-shirt. It was a terrible show. Not looking to do that again, right? I don't want to see the sequel. I learned. You learned your lesson. You know, the spirit guides were saying to me earlier when I was preparing to tape this that we all need, need, we, we all taste th food that we're not sure if we're going to like. I mean, how do you know? You know, think about a child. You give them the food, they spit it out. Well, I guess they didn't like that, right? They, they are understanding what they like and what they don't like. Humans need to go through life testing things out. It, they want the variables. That's what they're talking about. They, they want us to experience everything. Your soul came here not to hide out, not to withdraw, not to put up walls. Your soul came here to experience it all. This is an adventure land. They want to go on every ride. They want to try all the food. Now, here is the pro tip. The pro tip is you try it, you don't like it, you give yourself permission to not go back and, and have more of it. If somebody stands you up for an appointment, that's enough. If somebody says something rude to you, that's enough. If somebody demeans you, that's enough. If somebody uh, takes advantage of your time or your energy or your heart, that's enough. You don't keep going back and eating the same nasty food and telling yourself that it's really good food. It's magically going to taste better the next time. When that happens, when you keep going back to a situation or allow yourself to stay in a situation, that's a lesson. Uh, Meaning, I left out some words there. If you go back to a terrible situation or stay in a terrible situation, that's a lesson. Are you hoping that they're going to get better? Are you hoping that you'll learn how to make them happier? Are you hoping that it'll just, they'll get tired of being a jerk and they'll just get better? Because none of those things are going to happen. None of them. Zero chance. Zero. They're a jerk. They're going to be a jerk. They're looking for people who will put up with a jerk. That's the magnet. If you have a jerk and this jerk is jerky to this person and this person is not, doesn't 
believe that they should be treated like a jerk. They believe they should be treated respectfully. They're going to walk away and never look back. It didn't work. There was no magnetic. It bounced off. Why? Because of their own self-worth. They realize they've worked on themselves. You know, I've worked on myself where now when I meet people, I'm like, yeah, I recognize that energy, right? I'm, I reckon maybe it's not bad energy, but it's also not energy that I want to continue. Okay. But it you nibble the cookie. It takes a while to recognize the energy and go, okay, I recognize, I'm not sure what this energy is, but I recognize it. Now that's a pro tip too. If you recognize something, but you're not sure what it is, nine times out of 10, it's bad because we all recognize joy. We all recognize happiness. Okay. Now with lessons, sometimes we are trying to get the love out of the person in our adult life that we couldn't get from as a child. You couldn't get your mom's attention. Your, your dad doted on you, spent a lot of time with you, but you couldn't get your mom's attention. Therefore, you didn't care about your dad. You're like, I don't care. I need to get this person's attention because they don't love me and I need to convince them to love me. So then that can be that convincing to love me energy is what gets installed in your operating system. When you're an adult, you look for people that you need to convince to love you. You literally look for them. You look for the unavailable person. That's who you're attracted to. You're attracted, that magnetic attraction is because something you didn't get in your childhood and now you're trying to get it as an adult. So doing this inner work, asking questions. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why am I like this? Be open because the answers are going to come in like nibbling the cookie because eating the whole cookie is too much. It's traumatic. It, you know, you cannot, you just can't face it all. Even if it's not something as traumatic as abuse, it could just be, you know, that your parents said you have ugly feet and that's it. That's all they said. They were loving parent, but they said you have ugly feet. Your whole life, you never wear sandals because that's the one thing that lodged in your mind. Just like that. Now it's buried deep in here and you couldn't even tell somebody. I, I will tell you, you won't tell somebody I have ugly feet because you don't even want to have it. You don't want someone else to agree to it. So you just keep it quiet. You hide we hide these things because we were so, so hurt by it. When the parents said, you're just not very bright, are you? Okay, well, that's buried in here. Even if it was a joke, kids don't get jokes. They don't get jokes. Parents feed you, house you. It's, it's a very serious thing. A lot of kids take it in like a, like a sponge. And then, they end up marrying somebody who thinks that they're stupid, who continues the lesson. That was one part of the cookie, the parent. Another part of the cookie might be a high school or a school teacher. Another part of the cookie is a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And the next part of the cookie is your spouse or your boss. They're all playing a role on this cookie that you get to interact and nibble on. But there's a core reason. You can, you can always get to the core reason. So I suggest you look at patterns in your life, any pattern whatsoever. If something has shown up more than two times, three times, it is a pattern. It is a pattern. And once you start seeing the pattern, it's kind of everywhere. Like as soon as you see three, you're like, oh, even my dog, even my cat disrespects me, right? Even, you know, you just start seeing in all kinds of places. And that's where you need to be really gentle with yourself. Because if you start seeing 
the pattern everywhere, it feel you can feel like a failure. You can feel like, how am I ever going to fix this? Right? Like it's like, how did I get like this? Like, why is this happening? Be gentle. Ask the questions. Why is this happening? How did I get like this? But please don't say, my God, you're a mess. Look at this. It's everywhere. You, this, your whole life is a mess. You know, again, it's not helpful. It's to be judgmental of yourself is not going to help you learn your lesson. It's not going to help your soul to elevate. It's completely opposite of that. If you yell at yourself or are mean to yourself or critical of yourself, thinking, I'm just trying to learn the lessons, Susan. That's why I'm critical of myself. No, there's no critical. Trust me, I'm a Virgo. I'm an expert at criticism of myself. It doesn't work. What works is turning the criticism around and saying, and I had to learn how to do this. It's all stuff that I've learned to do. The reason I'm here today, being able to channel, talking to you, is because I've learned these things. It works. I'm living proof that it works. Okay? You turn it around and you say something like, okay, Susan, that was a mistake. No doubt about it. That was a mistake. Lucky for you, you've made mistakes in the past and you know how to fix them. You're pretty good at fixing mistakes. So let's just fix it and go on release it instead of Susan, why are you always doing the same thing over and over again? My God, when are you going to learn? Right? Again, criticizing yourself does not work. Being honest and saying, okay, I have a problem. I have a problem with this. I really want to work on this. I really want to understand it better. I'd really like some more guidance on this. I'm really open to understanding what I can't seem to understand. If you'll talk to yourself like that, your spirit guides will start giving you messages and helping you. If you say something like this, believe me again, speaking from our experience, I need more patience. I just need to learn about patience. Obviously, I need more patience. Oh my God. They'll give you lessons to learn patience. You know, you don't want that. You don't want that. <laughs> so you want to say, do I need to be more patient? Is patience what I need right now? Or do I need more understanding of the situation? Or do I need to understand that this isn't even my problem? I don't need patience with this problem because it's not my problem. Oh, I don't need patience. This is a mine. Right? So you see the way I dissected that? I, I opened it up. I looked at it fearlessly. I asked some questions. And then I came to a determination. Now, sometimes we do need patience. We really do. But I wouldn't go asking for it. I would simply say, I love it. When I'm patient, that's what I would say. I would claim, I wouldn't ask for it. I would claim it. I'm getting more and more patient every day. Fake it until you can make it. Say the words. Words have power. If you can say it out loud, it has even more power. But if you need to say it inside, you can. Affirmations have power. If you want to change your life, listen to Powerful, positive affirmations. You know, the whole I can, I will, you know, whatever affirmations resonate with you really are life changing because words are life changing. You're rewriting the script. You're rewriting the, the whole program of your energy. The program got a problem. You know, it, it has it has a flaw in it. It has a virus and you need to replace it with a more powerful, a more positive program. So these are some ways you can deal with the lessons and we're going to have lessons. Again, this is a learning school planet. We're always going to have lessons. And I find that if you're curious and inquisitive, I wonder why this is happening. 
This is interesting. Let me write it down in my book that it happened. And let me write down what feelings I had around it. I mean, I'm not asking you to journal. I'm asking you to write down, Bob piss me off. I feel pissed off. <laughs> okay? You write it down. You write down the date. This is powerful. They're telling me this is powerful. I'm always telling you guys, get a book. Put it on your phone. If you can make it private, make everything private. Because you're going to start seeing the pattern. If you will write down every time you have an emotion, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm just so frustrated, write it down. I'm happy, write it down. Please write it down. Go back and look over this whole, everything you've written down a month later. And if you see that Bob is pissing you off 20 times in a month, I think you got a problem with this man. I think maybe you need to talk to Bob or maybe you need to rearrange how you're dealing with this person, right? Or if you find that you've you've been uh, treated unfairly or someone has let you down, Sally let me down again. You look back and Sally only let you down one time in a month, but yet your energy feels like she let you down every day. How interesting, right? Oh, well, she only really let me down one time. But why do I feel like she let me down 30 times? Do you see how powerful this is? You guys, these are the keys that you unlock the chest, the vault that has your hidden lessons in it. This is how you do it. Because in our daily life, our brain is too worried about all the things that are going on. And it's not going to remember that Joe, you know, said something that upset you 10 times. And I think it's fascinating where they use that example where this person only let you down one time, but yet you feel like they let you down 25 times. That is gold. You can, you can get in there and figure out she only didn't show up or she only let me down one time why does it feel so much worse because then you might find out that when you think about it and you kind of ponder it and all you know pondering is really a loose daydreaming thinking ruminating is great because then your guides can come into your mind and give you information you might find that unbeknownst to you and to your consciousness this person reminds you of a sibling or this person reminds you of a best friend who betrayed you. This person has nothing to do with that, but that they let you down in that time of need one time and it felt like they let you down a thousand times. So now you can understand why this is your problem. All of your lessons are your problem. The people that are showing up to teach you the lesson are supporting players, your soul family, supporting players to help you mastery, get mastery with your soul, to grow, to be more expert. Because this, this planet is a very unique place where you can, you have free will, regardless of your numerology, your astrology, your parents, whatever it is, if you want to literally just go sideways, you can go sideways. Nobody's stopping you. So this is really, you know, I'll just say this. I did many videos on all these different topics, but when I was talking to you one, guy, one time, I saw this planet. They showed me this planet where there were guardrails. This was for souls that had just screwed up royally. Okay, like you screwed up so bad on planet Earth, uh, you can't come back because the free will here is too much. It's it's too much for you. You have too many choices and you don't really have self-control. So we're going to put you over here on this other planet where you have real guardrails. Like you you don't have free will on this planet. You're not a slave. You're not a you're not a in prison. You're not. It's not that, but it's like your car can only, the gas pedal can only go so far. 
we're not going to let you push that thing to 120. You're going to, you're just going to stop at 20 because you don't have the self-control. We're going to help you with that. So this other existence is, is made so that these souls, and, and in this case, particularly when you're not in a human body, what I see is, is souls being light bodies, like a body with light. And in many, many other existences, not just this limited experience, you know, like it's like a, a cheap adventure land where you really don't get very many experiences. But in a lot of other experiences, the light body lights up. So if you're compatible with this light body, boom, it lights up. You're good. If you're not compatible with this light body, you know, you know, you get a warning, you get a heads up. I'm not compatible with you, right? So in this limited experience, this soul just can't run around and do whatever it wants because it's very limited. If you think about being in a maze and you can only go certain ways, earth is a maze where you can go any direction, anywhere you want to go. But in this limited experience, it's a very limited maze. Your options are limited is what they're saying. So how did I even get there? Why am I even talking about that? I, I don't even know why I'm talking about that. Uh, because your soul is an expert, your mastery of your soul. Um, because people people do. They, they have too much and they're like, they just go off line. They go crazy. and. You know, if you do that enough times here, you can do that here. Believe it or not, you can do a lot of things here. It's, you know, it's it's all part of the experience. But I have a video on what happens to a dark soul. You might want to watch it. It was fascinating to me. I followed this dark soul, meaning a soul that went way outside of their soul group, of their soul contract. They just went berserk. Um, and perhaps they did it enough times that they they were like, you're not, you know, you're not coming back here until you teach us, you show us that you can be responsible. And I thought that's how I found the planet with the limited abilities. OK, look, you guys, I'm channeling. It's a little bit of a stream of consciousness. I hope that it made sense to you. I hope it helped you. If it did, please let me know in the comments. Share your experiences. When we all share, we all learn is what the spirit guides say. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button uh, and definitely check out the whole playlist. There's so many free videos just about every kind of topic that you can imagine, but the majority of them are created to help you in this human existence, in this human incarnation, is what they want to say. Okay, take really good care. I'm Susan Lynn, Psychic Medium. I'll see you again next Wednesday. <laughs>